Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'd like to take some time here to go over uh, a trade that we didn't take or a trade that I didn't take today, which is uh, a different type of video, I guess. But uh, I want to go over why I didn't take this trade on BPTH and and why I'm happy that I didn't take this trade. And, uh, and I also want to clarify that there is opportunity on this. That doesn't mean that it's not, you know, uh, open for trading. It just means that it didn't fit my strategy today and I trade a very specific strategy. That is a confirmation strategy which I teach to our team every day and uh, we, we go over this every day in our, our live uh, channel in Discord. So BPTH, uh, this is a low float stock. This one hit our scanners this morning uh, fairly early on I believe too. Let me blow up one of these charts. I've got two up. I'll go over why I have two up here shortly. Uh, this Area here is the pre-market session. And before that, this is the aftermarket. This was yesterday's uh, price action. So BPTH really didn't get much movement until this morning. And if I go over these candles, you'll see that uh, it wasn't until about here where we started to get a little a little bump up. But this was, I guess, the first candle. So started at around 7. Uh, I can see very little volume. We're talking less than 1,000 shares on a lot of these candles. You can see the volume up here. And this is using trading views charts. Love trading view, guys. Um, so BPTH, 7 a.m. started to gap up. Very little volume. You can tell just by looking at these candles. So they're not really, you know, very large candles. And if they're not very large, if you, if you see these uh, little specks here and there, that just tells me that there's very low volume. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I'm trading thousands of shares, I want to be careful uh, trading low volume. I don't want to provide all of the liquidity and the volume for this stock. So I like to wait for a few signals first. So BPTH hit the scanners around 7 a.m., started to spike up here and get some more volume, I'd say around 7.20, around this candle here, this larger green candle. About 20,000, uh, 30,000 shares on this candle, 50,000, 84,000. So you can see in this area, we started to really pick up in volume and that's what I'm waiting for. That's what I love to see. Now, this did give room for anyone who's trading off of these scanners and just trading, uh, you know, uh, for quick trades, the problem that I had with this, and we'll go over our indicator and how I use this in our pre-market session especially, but uh, BPTH, the problem I had here is that uh, this was not confirmation. Our strategy is, is very strict. So our job as, as traders is to uh, stick to that strategy and not veer off the path. Now, that's not always easy, right? That's easier said than done. Um, if you lack discipline, then typically in the realm of low float stocks like BPTH, you're you're prob probably going to get cut up, uh, you know, and not be able to to hang with with uh, a lot of the traders that that remain in this business for a long time. So BPTH is one of those stocks. It's got a very low float. So if I turn on our indicators here, uh, you'll see a mess of lines and levels. Let me go to our dynamic first. We'll go over to this other chart here, and this is just dynamic. So this is uh, a different uh, set set up here. I've got two different charts here. This is my typical pre-market and, and uh, well, anytime trading uh, setup here. What you're seeing is two different charts, both one minute charts. I use one minute charts for all of my trading. And what we're looking at is uh, BPTH on both. And we are seeing on the left hand side, we are seeing my dynamic indicators. And on the right hand side, you're seeing dynamic and a combination of our confirmation support and resistance. So for me, most important is going to be confirmation support and resistance. So these uh, white, purple, and sometimes red lines. I don't see any on here. I think we did this morning, but I don't see any right now. But typically it would be red lines, purple lines, white lines. Uh, for me, white lines hold the, the most weight as support and resistance, but they all hold weight in their own right. So no matter what, uh, the support and resistance is very key to my, my strategy. This was uh, not confirmation. And if I'm trading outside of my confirmation strategy, then what I need to do is look for a different type of approach. So that would be over here, dynamic. So I can trade the dynamic support and resistance on this and uh, I wouldn't be able to trade confirmation. And that's because confirmation, it had already filled a lot of these gaps. So let me pull up the dynamic chart alone and we'll just take a, a quick look at what happened at that beginning of the day there. And this is that same time that we were mentioning on the other chart, right? If I uh, do a side by side here, I guess that'll make it look a little easier. So what you're seeing is the side by side here of our key levels and you're seeing our uh, on the SPY left, new lows. 
the volume here as well. So you're seeing the dynamic. And let me turn off those scanners. So you guys don't get these scanner alerts. I'm doing this during the live market, so I turn those off. Uh, BPTH closed over its dynamic level. White candle, that means there's a lot of volume. So this first indicator is the BB volume hunter, the major red spotter, and the vertical trend spotter. So what it's doing is it's going to color code the candles based on the volume. So we have very strict requirements for our strategy. So in other words, in the pre-market session, in this ses uh, session here, I want to see a yellow candle, at least a yellow candle closing over one of my lines for it to then give me confirmation. But the issue that I'm seeing here, if I blow up just one of these, you'll see that on the dynamic uh, price signals indicator that I have for our team that we built for everyone, it, it's showing us uh, some, some uh, issues here, right? We're seeing that this one has a micro float and it's uh, showing uh, that, that warning sign there. So we've got a micro float here on BPTH. That is one of the major red flags to our strategy. We've got five major red flags to our strategy and having the float size below a million share float, that is a red flag. So this is considered a micro float and there's nothing wrong with trading a micro float, nothing wrong with trading a stock with these red flags. It's just whenever we see those red flags, I know that it's basically diminishing the value or the, the potential uh, of growth in my trade and therefore the probability is, is less. So if it's less likely, then I want to adjust my size and uh, where to put my stop loss. And here in the pre-market session, you can't put a hard stop. So you have to put a mental stop. So that means when I see this, this is a red flag. So recent bags, it's telling me that. It's saying there's a, it's a micro flow. There's some red flags here. So when we see those red flags, my job as a trader is to assess and adjust. Assess and adjust. So this is telling me that, yeah, you can trade this setup, but this is going to qualify as a low quality setup versus a high quality setup. Now, to make it very clear, just want everyone to know a low quality setup can still provide high quality results. It's just uh, not as probable. And as a day trader, uh, and this is a career, guys, this isn't a get rich quick scheme for me. This isn't I want to trade this week and not next week. This is something I've been doing for years and something I want to continue to do for years. So the one way that you can establish longevity in this market is through consistency. And for me to stay consistent, well, I've got to stick to my strategy and the rules to my strategy. So the rules to my strategy said, hey, there's some red flags here. So sure, you could trade this, this volume spike and this uh, volatility spike here. Sure, you could trade that. But this would not be considered confirmation. This would be high risk. We're not meeting all the requirements. And therefore, I would have to reduce my size and tighten up my mental stop loss. And when I say tighten up my mental stop loss, what I'm saying is if I get over this pivot zone, if, 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 if I'm buying over this pivot zone, my stop area will be just below this pivot zone, right? That's that's my goal there. Now, if we start to drop and, uh, you know, the, the rules to my strategy is if the candle, the one minute candle closes below that zone, then I have to bail. But if it's a lower quality setup like this one here with these red flags, then I may not wait for that candle to close below that key level. So maybe I'm waiting for it to uh, touch a certain level here. Maybe I have 390 or 391 over here is, is my, my level that I'm comfortable taking the stop at. You know, that's how I, I, I adjust for the conditions shown. Now, uh, it's, it's hard, guys. You know, in the pre-market session, we'll have 5, 10, 15 stocks, sometimes even more you know, hitting the scanners and letting us know that there's volume, it's a low float stock. So just knowing that it's a low float stock, just knowing that it has volume, that's not enough. That is not enough to stay consistent in this market. So in order to stay consistent in this market, we have to apply our strategy and we have to stay disciplined to that strategy. This strategy, in my opinion, there is no better strategy for low float trading in this market. And I've traded all of those uh, those other strategies that you guys, I'm sure, have tried as well. The VWAP, the, uh, VWAP bounce, the SMA uh, crossover, the EMA crossover, uh, you know, the the break of highs, the the bounce watch off the lows, the RSI is too high, RSI is too low, right? I can go on forever, guys. I've traded it all, and I will continue to because I'm really uh, interested in finding any edge in the market, any any way we can add to this strategy to make it even better, right, as the market's ever-changing. But 
With that said, I have found nothing, no strategy as consistent as confirmation strategy when it comes to low float stocks. And the whole idea behind this strategy is it was built around uh, mitigating risk and, and avoiding these major red trades. And I want to show you how we avoided BPTH in a major red trade today. So sure, this can be traded, but this is not confirmation. You can see over here, major resistance at 750 and recent high at 766. Well, this morning, the high was not at 766. So this is only because we then gapped up. You can see over here, 767. That's what that's taking that from. So in the pre-market session, this would not have said this. It would have said, okay, BPTH is popping up here. Uh, we've got recent highs at probably around $4, $5 or so. And it says major resistance around 750. So it's predetermining and identifying that there's recent bag holders and there's major resistance through $7.50. Again, what that is telling me is that this will not fit my strategy for confirmation. So if I'm trading BPTH in the pre-market session and I'm trading outside of that strategy, well, I can get myself into trouble and that's okay. I can trade a smaller size. Maybe I have a cushion built up. Maybe I, it, this is more of a hobby to some, some traders out there listening in. Maybe this is a hobby for you. And so you like taking more trades. That's fine. This is a career for me. And so therefore I have to be more strict, more selective, and really uh, identify the high value uh, setups versus the low value setups. And as soon as possible, and that is the point of these indicators, because the indicators are, are doing the heavy lifting for me. I don't have to come in here. You know, I could stroll in and, and literally just pull up this, this chart, any, any chart. Right now, Wish is hitting the scanners. I can go to Wish and instantly reset this chart, and I now instantly have levels on Wish, uh, which is obviously a, a terrible example because I'm not seeing any resistance on this chart. Uh, but excuse me, this is not the confirmation chart. Flip over to the confirmation chart. Reset the chart, zoom in, guess what? We know exactly what we're looking at. Instantly, we have the levels, okay? We have these key levels predetermined for us. This is the support and resistance levels, these lines and these percentages that you're seeing here. We're seeing a bullish vertical trend, okay? It's identifying that, yeah, it's extended. This is extended. We're seeing over here on our checklist, there's recent bags. We've got 664 as a major resistance level. That's all the way up here, 664. So this is not confirmation. And again, I can trade this, but I would rather trade something like dynamic on it or avoid it altogether. So let's go back to BPTH. But the point I'm trying to get across here is that the indicators will completely do the work for you. They will completely plot this for you. Now, let's pull over the uh, Discord and let's go to uh, our confirmation key level channel. So guys, if you have access to our Discord, you should have access to this channel here. This is the confirmation key level channel. Click on that confirmation key levels. And you can see if you scroll up, you'll see today is April 18th. Is that correct? Uh, yes. April 18th. Okay. Today at seven o'clock, TIRX, BPTH at 725. Hey, there it is. 750 is the key level. So we had predetermined at 725 a.m. Eastern time. That 750 was our key level. That's the level that we need for confirmation. And we always uh, recommend, remember to set your alerts below the key levels to better assess the conditions before getting in. Because if you see a bullish vertical trend or you see a uh, something, it's like the you see 10 green candles in a row and then it closes over that key level, well, that's a red flag. That is something that I want to consider. So setting those alerts below these key levels is going to better, uh, better help you assess the conditions before getting in, right? But you can see confirmation key level channel. If there's any trade that I'm looking to take, you're going to find it right here in our key level channel in Discord. I add all of these in the morning. You can see this April 18th. So all you have to do is come in and uh, pull this channel up and set these alerts below these key levels and say, you know what? If it hits that level, that's where uh, Bob's looking to trade it. If it hits this level, that's where I'm looking to trade it, right? So you can follow along with me. And this is all predetermined way before this ever happens, way before these moves ever happen. So we've got a number of these in here, not too many, but I would recommend setting your alerts below these key levels. Now, that's in our key level channel. That's what we were talking about. We were talking about BPTH has to close over what level? This level, 750. And so that's the key level. That's for confirmation. Anything underneath that level that I mentioned about the key level is not confirmation. And if you're trading outside of confirmation, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we want to adjust our approach. Me personally, I don't like to trade outside of confirmation. And if I do, again, I have to greatly reduce my size. And sometimes it's just not worth the trade, right? Sometimes it's just not worth it. Sometimes, you know, 
you're taking a small win, small loss, small win, small loss. Sometimes it's just not worth my time. Sometimes it's better for me to be selective. But I will say that if you are uh, similar to me, if you are a selective trader, then you need to know your, your best setups and why. Because if you know your best setup, you can be aggressive. You won't be hesitant. You won't be apprehensive, right? You will be aggressive in your trading and you can make enough money on your trade to make up for the other times you didn't take these other trades because you're being selective, right? That's if you're a selective trader. Now, if you're a trader who trades pretty frequently, that's that's fine too. But still, I would recommend sticking to your strategy and the rules to your strategy. Now, BPTH, white candles, that means we've got a lot of volume. Okay, great. We've got a lot of volume. We got up all the way up here to our key level of 750. And if I put this, uh, let me put this little price label here so you guys can see this. So that's 751. We'll go down just a penny. Can I get it? There we go. So 750, that's our key level, right? What do we see here, guys? We're seeing a false break. This is what we call a false break. And, you know, there's so many uh, traders out there telling you how to avoid this. Well, let me be the first to tell you. How do you avoid this? <laughs> you don't take it until it closes over the key level. This is confirmation. It needs to confirm this key level before we can trust it as traders. In other words, we're letting BPTH speak to us. Please speak to us. Can you close over this level and tell us that you are bullish? Or are you going to have a hard time and struggle there? Well, it did. So if you're setting your alerts below that key level and assessing conditions beforehand, you would be setting your alerts in here and setting your alerts in here. So you'd get triggered right here and you'd say, oh, BPTH is hitting the scanners. Let me pull it up. Let me get prepared for my trade. Okay, false break. We're sitting back, being patient, waiting for a close over. Wait a minute. We didn't close over. We had a false break. This alert here said, hey, the price enters an extended zone. Start to secure profit if not in the position and consider adjusting due to conditions. So, okay, this one here. Price exits extended zone. Sell signal. Secure your profit. Watch for a close over this zone for possible continuation. Well, guess what? It didn't close back over that zone, guys. It just fell from there. And a lot of traders would hang on to this. And there's going to be times, right, where I would say, you know what? I'm going to sell here. And, and traders, be, oh, yeah, let's get out of there. Great, great idea. But then it curls back up. And before you know it, it goes from all the way down here back up to $10, $20. And you're sitting there scratching your head. Like, oh, man, Bob, you told me to sell right here, right? You told me to sell. Yeah, that's right. Rules to the strategy say this is not a buy. It did not close over a key level. The rule is if it closes over this key level paired with volume and doesn't have a bullish vertical trend, which these indicators are spotting for us, then we can get into the trade and look for higher levels for for our resistance, targets, and and profit, right? But guess what? The rule is close over. It didn't close over. So that means the rule says don't get into this trade. And I'm glad that I didn't because if you zoom on out here, you can see, uh, let's, let's first take a look at this. Let's put another price label here on this purple line. Okay, that's $7. So $7.50 and $7. We didn't close over $7.50. We faded back off. And then guess what? We couldn't close over $7. So why would I trust BPTH any longer, right? It's speaking to me and it's saying, hey, Bob, you know what? I don't really, I'm not feeling it anymore, man. I'm, I just can't get over these levels. I just can't do it. There's too many bag holders, too much resistance, too much recent bags, right? Too many recent bags there pulling me down, pulling that price down. Every time I try to pop up, guess what? They're all selling on me. Well, guess what? It faded back down and all of a sudden we fizzled out. And what happens? A nasty offering. Look at this, guys. This is an offering right here. All of a sudden, boom, we're halting down. We're halting down. We're halt What's going on here? This is an offering. There was a news article that came out. Uh, they, they placed an offering out on BPTH. And guess what? It just completely dropped to nowheresville. But if you're trading confirmation, and that's the point of this video, if you're trading our strategy that we teach every single day, live in voice, in our Discord, Monday through Friday, you'll know that we did not take this trade in the pre-market session. Why? Because it never closed over that 750 level. And if we're trading below that, that is fine. But we want to adjust our size and reduce that size because it's it's got red flags, right? It's not confirmation. This is the best strategy for low float stocks. And I, I will say that I'll sing it until I'm blue in the face, guys, because I am so tired of seeing traders constantly thinking that they're trading confirmation, but they're actually trading down here. They're trading these levels. Oh man, Bob, it closed over this level. What happened? Well, that is not confirmation. The key level was mentioned in chat in our Discord every single day. You guys can follow along with this. Go into the Discord, blow it up. Here it is. And go right to the confirmation key levels. 
And uh, you can start right at the top, and there it is, BPTH, 750, all predetermined. We don't need anything else. We know exactly where to get in. Same with TIRX. Let's take a look at this one real quick. 187, 203. 187 and 203 on TIRX. In other words, it had to get over 187 first before we can trust it. And I know this looks like a mess, but that's because that's what it is. Here's our 187 level. Let's put a, uh, a little mark on here. There's 187. Let's now zoom in. That's the level it needed to close over. Guess what? It did not close over. We did not take the trade. And why? Well, guess where it went from there, guys? It's completely fading back off. Now, it's not one to say, and I'll turn this off for a second. It's not, you know, to say that this won't curl back up and get up there, right? But the old woulda, coulda, shoulda is not how I trade. The way I trade is a very specific strategy with rules. And if I can stay disciplined, well, I can stay consistent. And I can create longevity and I can be here next year and the year after and the year after that. And guys, I've seen so many traders in my time at Benzinga and my time at these other discords and just all around in day trading in general. I've seen so many traders come and go, come and go, come and go. And they'll tell you about, uh, you know, anything. And, and guys, I'm guilty of it at times, too. You find something that works. You feel it works for a week or two. You're just so excited to tell all your friends about, oh, man, you know, this VWAP bounce. It's the thing. It's it's everything. And then two weeks later, it's it's completely inconsistent. And that's that's the problem with low float stocks is it's easier to be inconsistent than it is to be consistent. So if you guys want to stay consistent, I suggest sticking to the confirmation strategy. This is that strategy. Close over 187, that's what we're looking for. All we have to do is set alerts up here. If the price gets up here, that's when we start watching it. We don't watch it when it fades off and goes to nowheresville. We don't do that. We don't even waste our time. We right click on trading view. We add an alert, we hit create, and boom, we're done. Just like that, guys. Now we are going to be notified if it approaches that key level. Then we can better assess using these conditions and using these indicators, hey, does it fit my strategy or not? And you can see that uh, this one was a mess and just faded off to Nowheresville. So back to BPTH. Guys, if you want to avoid getting caught in these nasty offerings, if you want to avoid you know, these, these crappy setups and really focus in on high quality setups versus low quality setups and want to be, uh, you know, establish a career in this market, guys, please feel free to check the links down below. Uh, and we, we will be going over this every single day, live in voice Monday through Friday. This is what I do guys. I trade live. I go over my trades. I let you know way before I ever get into the trade, what level I'm watching. And that's, that's the whole idea. And if you guys have these indicators, which you can find on bulletsbublive.com, if you have these indicators just like this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about before I even say it. You don't need me to say anything about it. You'll see it right here. I've got right now XPON hitting the scanners. Let's pull it up. Okay, XPON. Hey, this looks pretty good. It's getting some volume. Wait a minute. There's a bullish vertical trend. Price is extended. And look, major resistance at 390. And what do we have above it? A cluster of resistance. This is the key level. This is the key level. Until it gets to these key levels, I don't care. You can see I have an alert here. And I have an alert here. So I have my alert set in case we get up to those key levels. And you can set them below that as well. So as much as this is tempting, right? It's yelling at us on the scanners. It's If I pull over the scanner, what do you hear? XPON, 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 right? Oh man, the scanner's yelling at me. I better trade it. No, that's not the case, guys. We stick to the strategy that keeps us consistent. For me, that's confirmation. Confirmation of XPON. Let's check in the uh, key level channel here. Let's go to the key level channel again in Discord. All of these should be added in here. Scroll on down, XPON, there it is, uh, 390 and 407. 390 and 407, that is the key level. That's where I'm looking for possible trades and breakout and continuation. So until we get there, this is just a bounce watch. This is going to be choppy. We expect choppy price action. And if you guys have this indicator, if I go over to the uh, left-hand side here, to my other side, I've got the notes attached to this as well too. Let me blow this up and uh, make this a little bit easier to see. Let's go huge on the notes, right? We'll just make it huge just so you guys can see, but you can have it any size you prefer. We've got a confirmation checklist over here. We've got dynamic support and resistance being plotted automatically for us. We've got bullish vertical trends being identified for us. Price is extended. We've got that ex uh, being identified for us, right? We've got all of this being identified. But on top of that, we even got a, a string of text notes for you. Key notes. There is recent resistance spotted. Expect choppy price action. Reduce size and tighten up that stop loss. Lotto size or avoid altogether and hint 
click the three dots next to the indicator to use the alert. So if you click on the uh, indicator here, you can see these three dots and you can add alerts on any one of these zones being uh, these pivot zones. So you can save yourself time. That's the whole idea of our indicators and our library of indicators. You'll get access to this guys, bullishbublive.com. You'll get full access to all of these indicators. And what you will have is exactly what I'm seeing here. You'll see this checklist. You'll see these key notes. And again, you don't need it to have, uh, you don't need to have this so large, uh, but that's just the way I have it just for this example. But just as you can see, this is recent resistance spotted. So be careful there. If there wasn't recent resistance, if this didn't say recent bags, this would be a different scenario. This would say this is on watch for continuation, right? So let's see, wish is on the scanners. Let's see what it says here. Recent resistance spotted. Okay, so be careful. So yeah, we could trade it, but there's a bullish vertical trend. Here's a pivot zone, it has to get above. Another pivot zone being plotted. This is dynamic. We'll go over to uh, confirmation. Guess what, blow up confirmation chart. What do we see? Well, we see a whole bunch of lines and levels. That's called a cluster of resistance, right? So we're expecting choppy price action. And we do have major resistance with these recent bags. That's what this is. This is recent bags. This is our indicator now spotting that for you. You don't have to do the work, guys. The indicators will do the work for you. The thing I wanted to get across, though, uh, the most important part of this video, guys, is avoiding trades like this. So happy to say that I completely avoided BPTH. Not to say that there's not opportunity here. I'm not saying that one bit. If you guys made money on BPTH, awesome. But I would consider yourself lucky because this is a lucky type of trade, not a consistent strategy. And this is not something that I've seen people have a, a steady career doing. Right. So good luck if that's uh, what you're doing. I wish you luck. But, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but a lot of traders will, will come and go. But uh, which of those will actually make this a career? And that's the point, guys. I want to make sure that our team is, is learning this full on. And you guys fully understand when I put alerts in chat, what the meaning behind the alert is. It's not just some alert. Just be like, hey, guys, this stock's moving. It's got some volume. You better trade it. No, 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 that's not it. Uh, you know, we've got the best scanners there is in the market, period. And I use Trade Ideas for my scanners. And you guys can see the link down below if you want to get a discount on that. But Trade Ideas scanners, the ones we have here, are the best at identifying value. But I have been building scanners for years. I am a scanner nerd, 100%. And I still have not found a scanner that I could just trade off of blindly. So this, uh, the, the strategy is more important than anything, guys. The strategy is always more important than anything. And you can see here that uh, we did not close over that key level of 750. This is the gap I was eyeing. Well, it didn't give it to me. And guess what? I'm not wasting time sitting here glued to the screen. I'm now uh, you know, making this video for you guys and, and enjoying time with my family. That's, that's what I'm doing. So I'm not trading this downtrending type of stock. I'm not a short seller. I'm a bullish momentum trader, a breakout trader, a technical trader, whatever you want to call me. It doesn't matter. I'm a low float stock trader, just very similar to uh, Ross Cameron and warrior trading. I tried that. I went down that path for a while. It did not work for me. Um, you know, it, I've got no problem with him and his strategy, but what I am saying is that it just didn't work for me. So if you guys have tried things like that before in the past, then you're probably similar to me and, and, and in the same boat I am in. And so if you're looking to avoid, uh, you know, crappy setups, uh, for lack of a better term, and, and really focus on high quality setups, well, come on over to the Discord and we'll teach you how. So guys, I appreciate your time. I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.